Perhaps I should start off by revealing my location, sex, and age. I am a female, 19 years of age, though at the time I was 17, and I live in Texas when this incident occurred. I was living in a small town by the name of Cleveland, Texas. Trails End was the name of the estate. It was a trailer park buried within the woods. It was a place easily overlooked. I'm not quite sure how my mother and I have too have found it. Cleveland is approximately one hour and a half away from Houston. Well, my mother's erratic driving. They are both EMTs, so they took even 48-hour shifts. This left myself, my sister, and my brother at home alone with two dogs, a pit bull and a Doberman pincher. I know this may be a little too much information, but this all pertains to the incident. My siblings and I had a chore of taking the dogs out every night before we slipped into bed. I am deathly afraid of werewolves, so heading out at night time was something I never desired to do. Out of fear, I told my 15-year-old petite 4'11 sister and my 12-year-old 4'6 brother to take them out. Myself, being five foot three, athletic build, and simply more capable of holding onto a Doberman's leash better than the both of them. And this was no typical Doberman pincher. She was a European warlock bred to take down boar and bear. Her back reached about four foot two, and her weight was about 160 pounds. Her canines were approximate two inches long. She was a massive dog. She was capable of taking down anything as we had seen before. She took down a buck by merely charging him, using her hind legs to force her high enough to reach his neck, and pulled him down. It was silly trying to explain to the game warden that we did not unleash her to do so. In fact, this is why we had to walk her. We couldn't risk her being put down, a $3,000 plus $2,500 on successfully curing her. A parvo would have upset my mother if the money had gone to waste. I know. If you wanted to read numbers, you would have picked a math book. Trust me, these numbers are essential and vital in this horrific tale. Not even five minutes after I sent them outside, both of the dogs had pried themselves from my siblings' hands, and two of them came into the house crying. They were apologizing profusely, and I was annoyed, hushed them, and asked them to accompany me in finding the dogs. The response was, of course, for none of us wished to get into trouble with our parents. We readied ourselves with extra leashes, flashlights, and our bikes. Well, their bicycles. I didn't have one. Mine had been run over one evening, so I had to use my feet. It wasn't an issue for me, and so we began to trek through the silent roads of our neighborhood. They explained that the dogs had run off into the woods. This was believable, considering that this is the only place they'd flee to. The two of them parted ways from me. They would check the streets while I walked through the woods. I warily agreed. I wasn't fond of the idea, given the only thing popping up in my head was creatures and darkness and shadows and boogermen. But I obliged, confronting my fears with nothing to a month worth of grounding. So, armed with a mere flashlight and my feet, I walked. There were fresh dog tracks. They were large like my Doberman but I was afraid of spotting a werewolf. I disregarded logic. However, I pressed forward. And the reason I keep saying I'm afraid of finding these things is because people in our neighborhood have said they have seen this thing many times. I'd never seen it, just the stories it kept replaying in my mind. As I traveled deeper into the woods, the more I relaxed, despite the occasional shuffle of the leaves in front of me, everything seemed calm. The disturbance of the leaves could have only been one or both of our dogs, so I worried not. The pattern of feet sounded as though it was an animal on all fours. This eased my mind, considering a creature would probably be on two legs. Then the pattern stopped. I called out for Storm, my Doberman, and heard a shuffle of leaves as the animal ran away from me. I began running now. I had no idea how far I was into the forest at this point. Frankly, I didn't care either. That was until I stumbled upon a shack. It was an old shack run down. The single window by the door had been shattered. The wood rotting snapped and scraped away. Though it seems an ignorant idea, I switched off my flashlight. If there was anyone inside, I did not wish to draw their attention to me. Hypocritical, I suppose, considering the next part. I don't know what compelled me to do so, but I reached for the knob. I twisted it, and I heard a click confirming that it was unlocked. The door creaked open slowly. I entered cautiously and found newspapers scattered about. 
They ranged between the years of 62, 2013, and all kinds of years in between. Cocking my head, I reached for one of the papers. It listed comics, missing persons, and available occupations. Then it happened. There were footsteps drawing near the shack. They weren't an animals. They came in twos, heavy, and it was as if they wanted to be heard. I dropped the paper immediately. I could feel my knees begin to buckle in fear. Faith. I sighed in relief. It was my little brother. They addressed me by my middle name. Are you there? My sister's voice chimed in. I wanted to speak out, but something seemed off. I couldn't tell if it was my paranoia or if something was actually wrong. Faith, did you not find Stormy? I felt a wash of release once more. It was my brother. He always addressed Storm by her, though short, elongated name. No, I finally answered. Though I think she's stalking around somewhere out there. Come out here. Let's look for her together. Alex started again. However, there was an eerie neutrality to her voice. She didn't sound human. It could have been due to the cold, but I didn't trust it. J just a moment, I said. I leaned up cautiously and peered out through the window. There was a singular silhouette much too tall to be my sister, and way too tall to be my brother. Hell, it couldn't have had been one of my mother's, Maria, either. It was saying was very tall. His voice was deeper now. It was definitely not my brother, even though he chose to hit puberty in that instance. He would have never called me by my first name. You better get out of there. I winched at his tone. Now he warned. I couldn't tell if he was a grown man. He seemed much too tall to even be considered human. I froze. Just as I was about to flip on my flashlight, I heard a faint rustle of movement to my left. Well, we heard it. I could tell because he turned his head toward the noise. It was definitely no werewolf given its ovaloid face spiraled horns and beard i gasped silencing myself with my hands a guttural growl erupted from the left it sounded like storm the beast outside of the shack sniffed he turned toward the canine hind legs shifting with his steps what erupted from his muzzle brought tears to my eyes he shook his head tilted his head back and it screamed it sounded like a terrified woman and a fox it was a shriek shrill the canine began barking storm. I called out. He worked his head up, his ears rising curiosity. It was a terrible idea at the time, but worked wonders with my luck. She had charged him. I could hear her heavy steps. I twisted the knob and bolted outside. I turned back to split second to see her up on her hind legs. She was attempting to go for the neck of this creature. He was much too massive. You see, when she stands up, she's about 6'2". Judging by the fact that she didn't reach his neck, he had to have been seven and a half to eight foot tall. I heard her whine, and my heart ached. She had gotten hurt, and I was next. I could hear her steps drawing near. The noise was too close for comfort, and no matter the amount of adrenaline pumping through my veins, I couldn't outrun him. He screamed. It was so startling that I, I just got sick to my stomach at the sound as I stumbled, and I became sick as I vomited on the ground. This creature was screaming at me so loudly that I could not stand the sound that it was making. It was beating on the trees behind me, scratching on them, screaming at me. And then this damn thing starts talking to me, sounding like every person in my family. Phrases that my family had said to me. It's dinner time in my mother's voice. Time to come in. It's past curfew in my dad's voice. Come and play with me, and my siblings' voices. It was using every voice over and over and almost perfected, except for the evilness you could hear in the voice. You could tell just by the evilness that it was not them, but it was enough to make you think that it could be. I ran as hard as I could, finally making it to my house and running inside and locking the door. Thank God my siblings were already there, and they had found the dogs. Thank God, I heard scratching at the door, and as I turned, there was Stormy at the door also. She had a slight limp. She had been injured, but she was fine. I let her into the house. We locked the doors. All that night, we heard whispering outside the windows.
We were scared. We were afraid it was going to come in as the doorknobs would turn. And then we heard it say, You came in my house. Why won't you let me in yours? Can I come in? And we were all screaming no, and it would beat on the doors the harder we screamed no. Finally, it stopped. The dogs all stopped barking, stopped sniffing, and they laid down. And the dogs were relaxed. And for the rest of the night, there was no other sounds. We have never ventured back into the woods, and we make sure now that the dogs do not get loose. We have no idea what lives out there, but we don't plan on going back. Yeah, uh, it reminds me of an old shack I found behind my granny and grandpa's where I found my toy gun laying in there, and I'd end up missing it for a long time, and there was all kinds of different toys and tools and different things in it. Uh, I think these things will use old buildings and pump houses and, uh, you know, shacks and barns to live in, and I think that whenever you go into these places, they feel like you've trespassed into their home. I know that, um... You know, they would turn our doorknobs and stuff, and they would, you know, say my granny's name and stuff like that. And sometimes they did sound like family members, enough that even sometimes we would holler back, what do you want, or what? So they are good at disguising their voices, and I think they do that to lure us, to try to get us out there to where they're at. I believe they're definitely evil. I don't believe they mean any good by what they're doing, and I think they will trick you, and I think that you won't come home. And I think you're very lucky that you did make it home, and you're very lucky that your dog made it home. And if you ever find a place like that, don't trespass and go inside of it. Uh, it's better to leave things alone. Um, I think, you know, I even learned that too. So, uh, the beating on your house and stuff, by it wanting to come in, you've done the right thing by telling it no. That's probably what kept it out. You did not give it permission to enter. And that's probably what saved you. Thanks for listening, guys. Until next time, keep your head on a swivel. Don't be something's dinner for sure. And we'll see you on the next one.